Hi everyone. In a series of question and answers from industrial microbiology, in this video, we are going to discuss another question that is write a brief account on the steps involved in downstream processing. See the answer for this one. So, how can we define a downstream processing? The various steps or stages involved in the processing of the product recovery or recovery of the product after the fermentation or bioconversion stage of separation, purification and packaging of products is going to be defined as downstream processing. So that means whatever the steps that are involved in the recovery of the product after the completion of fermentation process is going to be defined as downstream processing and this downstream processing is going to be of uh, having different steps the first step is separation cell disruption extraction isolation purification and dry so these are the several steps that are going to be involved in the downstream processing and if you observe here so this is the fermentation that is occurring so whatever the process of fermentation that is conversion of the substrates into products is occurring these all things is going to be called as upstream processing which we will discuss in another video and in this video we are discussing about after the completion of the fermentation how we are going to recover our product and what are the steps involved is nothing but the downstream processing which simply in some books it can be written as DP and DSP and here is the overall uh, downstream processing and steps which we are going to discuss now. The first step, separation of the particles. So in the downstream processing, separation of the par particles is going to be the first step and it involves the separation of uh, solid substances from the liquid medium. So if our product is in the liquid medium, we will take that one. If it is our solid medium, we are going to take this solid and liquid is going to be uh, taken as a byproduct or some other thing. So, this separation of the particles is going to be generally done by the following ways. So, that can be of uh, centrifugation, filtration or uh, whatever the process. So, first step in the separation of the particles is filtration to separate the solids and the liquid obviously. And this filtration is going to be used mainly for separation of the filamentous fungi and the bacteria. And we can use any type of the filtrations, either it may be sulfur surface filtration or depth filtration, centrifugal filtration or rotating drum filtrations. And the second one is centrifugation. This is going to be used for the separation of bacteria. Usually protein precipitates can also be done by this centrifugation method. And next third one is the flocculation and the fourth one is the flotation. These two are generally used for small bacterial cells which are very difficult to separate even by centrifugation. Then we go with the flocculation or the flotation method. In the flocculation we are going to have the aggregation of the cells which may be by induced by adding any inorganic salts, minerals or hydrocolloid and in the flotation we are going to use the gas bubbles to absorb or adsorbments to adhere the bacterial cells and which can be easily taken out in the form of the gas bubbles. So these are the four different methods or the ways by which the first method of downstream processing is going to be done to separate the particles. And the next one that we are going to discuss is the cell disruption. If we are going to have the uh, our product in the cells, that means if we are going to have the intracellular product. So this is what we have discussed. And if we are having the intracellular product, then we go with the cell disruption. So disruption of microbial cell is usually difficult because of their small size, rigid cell walls high osmotic pressure inside the cells. It is generally achieved by the following way. So what are the different uh, methods or the ways by which we can disrupt the cell means? The first one 
mechanical cell disruption. So this involves the use of shearing, that is collard mill, ball mill grinders, homosnizer, ultra centrifugation. So these all methods are used to lyse the cells to release or product. And the second type is going to be the drying. It involves the drying of the cells by adding a huge amount of cold acetone and then extracted using buffer or salt solution. Then the lysis, so obviously lysis of microbial cells can be achieved by any chemical means that means adding of uh, salt or surfactants, osmotic shock, freezing or lytic enzymes like lysosomes, all those things. Then uh, coming to the extraction, so we have disrupted the cell and the cell has lice and now whatever the content that is present it is free now. Now this, from this we have to extract the thing. The third step. So recovery of a compound or a group of compound from a mixture or from cells into solvent phase is going to be the extraction. It is achieved both separation of the particles as well as the concentration of the product. So we have to uh, separate the cell debris that is going to be there and we have to concentrate our product. And the process of extraction is frequently uh, very much useful for the antibiotics and most of the lipophilic substances. Lipophilic means the one which is going to be uh, dissolved in the lipids are going to be called as lipophilic. So such type of the substances are going to be uh, mainly used by this extraction method. And the process that is going to be achieved mainly by the three methods. One is liquid-liquid extraction or whole broth extraction or aqueous multi-phase attraction. So these are the three methods by which the extraction can be achieved. So now these all steps, one more step we are going to discuss that is going to be the primary recovery of the product isolation. Now we had seen the first one se separation of the particles then we have gone with the cell disruption, then extraction, and next fourth step is the isolation. So we are going to isolate our the thing that we are going to extract. That is nothing but our product. So some of the product concentration may occur during the extraction step that I already told you. And this isolation is generally achieved by the following ways. One is the evaporation. So continuous flow evaporator is going to be used and such that you are going to concentrate the product to remove the water or the liquid. Then falling film evaporator, thin film evaporator or spray dryer. So these are all going to be used to evaporate the water content and concentrate our product. Then next membrane filtration. So here we are going to use the microfiltration or the ultrafiltration or sometimes uh, reverse osmosis and electrodiolysis can also be used. So here in the product purification these are all going to be done. Then ion exchange resins is also going to be used for example dextran cellulose, polyamine, acrylate etc. Then adsorption resins. So these adsorption resins may be of a polar apolar or semi-polar type. If they are polar, uh, example are going to be sulfoxide and amide. If they are apolar, we are going to use the styrinid avanyl benzene or semi-polar uh, is going to be acyclic esters. Then next coming to the fifth one, purification. So in the product purification, we are going to have the following things and mainly here the product is highly purified state and that can be achieved by crystallization so here you can see the crystallization it is used for the low molecular mass compounds like uh, antibiotics then chromatographic methods we have uh, several uh, types of chromatographic methods that we are using here in the purification method and examples of such kind is going to be ion exchange chromatography partition chromatography affinity chromatography chromatography, adsorption chromatography, so that we can take any time to purify. And this chromatography methods are going to be mainly used to purify the low molecular mass compounds from a mixture of similar molecules such as antibiotics and 
macromolecules like enzymes and uh, the final step of this uh, downstream processing is going to be the drying and drying is the most important step in the downstream processing which makes the product suitable for handling and storage and this can be achieved by three types of the drawings one going to be vacuum drawing and the second one spray drawing and the third one freeze drying or lyophilization so vacuum drying is going to be performed in a tight vessels where we use the vacuum pumps the pressure and the humidity within the chambers are going to be reduced and by lowering the atmospheric pressure within the chamber the material inside is going to be dry more quickly through contact with the indirect uh, the indirectly heated walls then the second type is spray drying where it is a method of producing a dry powder from a liquid or slurry by rapidly drying with the hot gas so this uh, spray drying is specially used for sensitive materials such as foods and the pharmaceutical products then freeze drying or lyophilization uh, this is completely a frozen sample is placed under a vacuum in order to remove the water or other solvents from the sample allowing the ice to change directly from a solid to a vapor called as sublimation without passing through the liquid phase so these are all the uh, different steps of the downstream processing that we discuss and our finished product is ready and at every stage whatever the cell debris or the wastage is coming this is all going to be taken out as a effluent okay so these are the three uh, sorry six steps that we have discussed one is going to be called as a separation of the particles the second one is going to be cell uh, disruption then the third one is extraction then the fourth one is going to be called as isolation and the fifth one is going to be called as called as product purification and the sixth one is drying so these are all the different types of the steps in the downstream processing so we will discuss uh, another question in another video thank you